I knew that my voice, you know, had some type of power, but the way I think and the way I move, I still didn't say much. At only 24 years old, Deshaun Watson has one of the toughest jobs in professional sports. Very few people in the world have to go through the things that a black quarterback has to go through. This tug of war about being true to where I came from and then also pleasing not only my franchise, but the fans of that franchise. For me personally, anything on the air, politics or religion, I stay away. You're fighting a battle that you can't really win. But now, new battle lines have formed. Justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! And Watson has had enough. This is the first time I feel like my voice, I can say whatever I need to say and get it off my chest, and it's going to, you know, spark a movement. I'm Tim Kewen. This is ESPN Cover Story. Hello, Deshaun. What's up, what's up? I'm okay. I'd rather be in person, but <laughs> this is what we got. Nothing about the 2020 NFL offseason has been normal. For this interview, Deshaun Watson and I are socially distanced by about 2,000 miles. And still, Watson's voice is loud and clear. The whole world needs to come to notice on, you know, what's been going on and what needs to be changed. For Watson, this breakthrough is radical. He is now going where only one other black quarterback had gone before. When there's significant change, and I feel like that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, and this country is representing people the way that it's supposed to, I'll stand. The NFL did exactly what it wanted to in not allowing Colin Kaepernick back in the league. It made a lot of guys very, very cautious and, and nervous about being able to step up and say the things that needed to be said. You've seen what Colin Kaepernick had to go through. You've seen, you know, these other quarterbacks or other athletes, you know, what they went through. But that's why I haven't spoken up about that stuff. But Watson has had reason to speak. Like in 2018, after the Texans lost a close game late to the Tennessee Titans. Watson looking. Watson still has time. He steps back. He throws over the middle. Throws a completion down the field, but as it happens, the time expires. A Texas, I believe he was a superintendent, shortly after the game tweets, that's why you can never trust a black quarterback to make good decisions at the end of the game. John, what do you think about the superintendent at 100 miles north here saying you can't count on a black quarterback? Uh, I mean, that's on him. You know, may peace be with him. Nah, I worry about me, so I'm not worried about what he has to say. It goes back to the, you know, being, you know, in a category that people put me in. Um, and I just felt like I just always had to do more being a black quarterback. I always felt like, you know, they label me and value me a little less than the other guys. George Floyd's death on May 25th, 2020 changed everything including Watson. It was sick for those policemen to, to sit there and know that this man is dying and he's you know, yelling for his mom. Speaking about it now is it's tough because it, it makes me angry. When I say black lives, you say matter. Black lives. Matter. Black lives. Matter. We were just having all these conversations and it was, they were hard to do. And also knowing that Deshaun, you probably can do something. A march to protest Floyd's death was scheduled for June 2nd in Floyd's hometown of Houston. I needed to be there. I wanted to be there. It was a must, uh, and I wasn't going to miss it. We've seen the anger in the streets. We've seen beauty also. We've seen people standing up and speaking up, and we've seen massive changes happen across the country. Less than a week later, Watson spoke on Twitter, joining DeAndre Hopkins in successfully lobbying their alma mater to change the name of an academic building named for a pro-slavery advocate. I think I had a couple classes in there. It just felt, it felt wrong. And at that time, 
but we didn't feel like we can speak out about it because we're gonna be looked upon differently. For me to be able to finally feel like this is a perfect opportunity with you know my friend to change what needs to be changed, um, it was it was great. At one point in our interview, I glimpsed Watson's old reflexive caution, and then watched him reset. What unique challenges does a black quarterback face when deciding to speak up on social issues? Honestly, I, I think. I think you have to watch what you say sometimes. Um, and I feel like the, honestly, I'm gonna take that back. I feel like, to keep it real with you, I feel like whenever a black quarterback, especially, speaks up, um, the outside world sometimes don't think they're educated enough to know what's going on. I'm very confident in, in the knowledge that I know about just life uh, issues. Um, the, the power that I have when I speak, and just me growing outside of football. It's been just real steps in terms of the maturity of a, a young man, and like, we've just reached a tipping point where it's like, we don't care. Like, we're, we're gonna say the things that need to be said. Voices are getting heard because voices are being used. And some, like Watson's, promise to get louder. A change is happening. This is the first time I feel like my voice, I can say whatever I need to say and get it off my chest, and it's going to you know, spark a movement. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.